tap the toggle to turn it on, then the display will always refresh at 90 hertz. So no matter what you're doing, you're gonna get that buttery smooth motion. What's up guys, Eric here from TechSode TV, and today we're taking a look at 30 unknown features on the Google Pixel 4 and 4XL. And some of these features are legitimately hidden. This first feature has to do with your recent app screen. So to get to that, just swipe up and hold for a second. You get to all of your recent applications. Now, if you long press on any text shown within this app preview, it's actually going to highlight that text and then let you copy that text. Then you can just swipe over to another application like messages, long press in the box, and paste the copy text there. You may have also noticed that it's contextual. So if I long press on this YouTube link, it actually gives me the option to open the video right in YouTube. And if you long press on an image, you get the option to share the image. While we're still looking at the recent apps, I wanna point out that if you tap the app icon, you get a few options. And one of those is to open the app in split screen mode. So if I tap that, I now get the option to open a second app. So if I tap the second app, I now have two apps open at the same time. And if I grab this bar in the middle, I can move it up. And this allows me to have the top app take up a third of the screen and the bottom app take up two thirds, or I can pull it down and have the top app take up two thirds and the bottom take up one third. And if I drag this bar all the way up or down, I can exit split screen view and just go back to a single application. You may have also seen this pause app option. If I tap this, all it's gonna do is stop me from getting notifications from that application for the rest of the day. So now if I go into my app drawer, you'll see that Twitter is grayed out because I paused the application. If I tap to open Twitter, I'll get the option to unpause it and start getting notifications again. One more neat feature in the recent apps page is that if you swipe up from either the applications or the Google search bar, you can see all of your applications. And this works even if you currently have an application open. So if I open up Twitter, then I go to my recent apps, then I swipe up again, you can see I get to all of my applications right here. Just make sure that when you swipe up, you're grabbing from either the applications or the Google search bar. If you grab all the way from the bottom, it's just gonna take you home. If you wanna close all of your applications for some reason, you can just continually swipe up, closing one application at a time. But if you wanna close it faster, just scroll all the way to the left, and in the back, you'll see an option to clear all applications in one shot. You probably already knew that you could activate Google Assistant by squeezing the sides of the phone, but you probably didn't know that you could also activate Google Assistant by swiping diagonally in from either the left or right corners on the bottom. And as you can see, this works from any screen. Speaking of Google Assistant, if you don't want to speak to it, you can actually tap this keyboard in the corner and you can type your command to Google instead. This is particularly useful if you just want to quickly add a reminder, but you're in a public place and you don't feel totally comfortable just talking to your phone to add that reminder. This is a great way to do it. If you're heading into a meeting or maybe into a classroom and you want to quickly set your phone to vibrate, all you have to do is press the power and volume up buttons at the same time. When you do that, you get this notification on the bottom that says calls and notifications are on vibrate. Then when you're out of your meeting or your class and you wanna turn the volume back on, all you have to do is click the volume button up once, then tap this top icon twice. You probably already knew about this one, but I'm including it just in case. Instead of swiping up and holding for a second and then swiping through to find all of your recent applications, you can just swipe across the bottom to switch through all your applications, just like on an iPhone. If you're using the default wallpaper that came on your Google Pixel, you can actually swipe your hand over the phone and it's going to use the sensors in the top of the phone to figure out which direction you're moving your hand and it's going to move these little symbols in whatever that direction is. And if you don't like exactly how this wallpaper is done and you wanna customize it, you can actually just long press, go to styles and wallpapers, tap come alive, pick the wallpaper you wanna customize, then tap customize, then tap do it yourself. Now from here, you can either tap to place different types of symbols. You can long press to create other types of symbols. You could tap with two fingers and you could draw a line with your finger. If you want to translate a menu to a different language, or maybe you just want to copy a web address from either a magazine or a poster or something, you can just open up the camera app, then long press, and that's going to activate Google Lens. Then you can just tap the text you want to translate, highlight it, then tap translate. Then you can translate it to just about any language you want. And if you tap a link, you can actually go straight to the link by tapping the website option. As convenient as it is just long pressing to get into the Lens app, you don't always need to go into the Lens app to get Lens features. 
In this case, I'm just gonna zoom in on the link that I wanna go to, and you can see right away, Google figured out what the link was, and it gave me an option right at the bottom of the camera to go directly to that link. So if I tap this, it's gonna take me right there. The Pixel can also figure out if you wanna scan a document. So here, I have this piece of paper that's rotated slightly, but at the bottom, you can see that there's an option to scan the document. If I tap that, it's going to take a picture of the document, and then let me adjust the corners as necessary to get just the document. That looks pretty much perfect, so I'm just gonna tap done. And there is my scanned document. Now I can share it as a PDF or share it as an image. If you ever want to quickly switch between the front and rear cameras while you're in the camera app, all you have to do is give it a double twist and it'll switch right over. And again, I'll give it another double twist and now it'll switch back to the rear camera. If you're ever taking pictures of something and then suddenly you decide that you want to film it really quick, you can just hold the shutter button and it's going to start filming for you. And it's going to continue to film until you release that shutter button. Now, unfortunately, at least for now, and I'm hoping this is just a bug, if I swipe up on the video, you can see that it's only a 0.8 megapixel video, which is 1024 by 768, which is a really small video. So I'm really hoping this is just a bug and sometime later we'll get an update where this is at least a 1920 by 1080 video. But the neat part is if I swipe down a little bit further, I can actually pick recommended shots from the video and export those as HDR. Now what I don't understand is how it goes from a 0.8 megapixel video to a 3.1 megapixel photo. Not quite sure how that works, but I'm guessing this is just another bug. Here's another feature in the camera app that you probably already knew about, but I figured I'd include it just in case. Instead of pinching to zoom, you can actually just double tap and that'll zoom in 2x. Then you can grab this little bubble here and zoom in or out however much you want all the way up to eight times. If you notice that your screen keeps turning off while you're looking at your pixel, like let's say that you're cooking something and you have a recipe on your phone and you keep looking at the recipe to see what the next steps are, but while you're looking at it, the screen just happens to turn off and you don't wanna set your screen timeout to something like five minutes, you can turn on a feature called screen attention so that anytime you're looking at the phone, the screen is not gonna turn off. To enable this, you need to go to settings. So you can either swipe down twice on your notification shade and tap the settings gear, or you can swipe down with two fingers to get straight there, or you can swipe up from the bottom and tap the settings app. Once you're in settings, go to display, tap advanced, tap screen attention, and turn that on. While we're in display settings, I also wanna point out dark theme. If you turn this on, it's gonna set the background to black and all the text to white. And this is important because it's actually gonna save a lot of battery life because this is an OLED screen. And with OLED screens, any black pixels are actually off. So if the majority of the screen is black, then you're gonna save a lot of energy. And this works all throughout the user interface. So if I swipe down again, you can see that my notification shade is now black. If I go to my app drawer, that is all black as well. So if the battery life on your Pixel isn't quite getting you through a full day, then definitely try turning this feature on because it should make a noticeable difference. Now playing is a feature that you probably enabled when you first set up your Pixel, and it's a feature that listens to the ambient music around you and then tells you what song is playing on your lock screen. But what a lot of people don't know is that Google keeps a history of all the songs that it's heard. So if you were at a store or maybe a mall earlier in the day and you heard a song that you really liked but you forgot to check your phone to see what the song was, you can go to settings, then go to sound, then go to now playing, then tap now playing history, and you can see all of the songs that your Pixel heard when you were out and about. There's also a faster way to get to this screen as well by using the volume button. So if I go back to my home screen, tap either volume up or volume down, then tap this little settings icon, then tap see more, then it takes me right here where I could tap now playing again, now playing history, and see the songs that the Pixel has heard recently. If you have the 64 gigabyte version of the Pixel, this next feature is gonna be really useful for you. If you go to your settings, then go to storage, you'll see this option called smart storage. And what this is gonna do is anytime you're getting close to filling up all of your storage, it's going to take all of your photos and videos and delete them off your device once they've been backed up onto Google Photos. There is one catch though. If you're using the free version of Google Photos, you have a pretty limited amount of storage. So once that fills up, this feature is not gonna do much for you anymore. Alternatively, if you're using the unlimited storage option, you're gonna get compressed versions of your photos and videos backed up, but then once those get deleted from your device, you'll never be able to get the original ones back. 
Now, I personally haven't noticed a terribly big difference between the compressed and uncompressed photos, but if you're gonna be making larger physical prints of the photos that you took with your phone, then that's where you may start to notice a difference between the compressed and uncompressed versions. So if that's your situation, I highly recommend moving those photos to an external backup drive or maybe another computer soon after you take the photos. If you often let people use your phone to make calls or you have kids that sometimes use your phone to watch like Netflix or something like that, then this next feature is gonna be great for keeping all of your data protected. So if you go to settings, then go down to security, then scroll all the way to the bottom, tap advanced, scroll further down and tap screen pinning and go ahead and turn this on. What this is gonna do is allow you to lock someone into whatever application you want. So let's say someone's borrowing your phone to make a phone call. All you have to do is swipe up and hold for a second to get to your recent apps, tap the app icon and now tap pin and this is going to keep them locked into this application. So no matter what they do, they can't swipe up to get out of this application. The only way to get out is to swipe up and hold, and when you do that, it takes you to the lock screen. So unless they know your password, there's no way they're gonna get into your phone. And once you unlock your phone again, you're free to move about as usual. If you're trying to take a night sight photo handheld with the Pixel, you go ahead and tap that. You'll see that there's this hold still icon that appears for a couple seconds, and that circle kind of fills up. And the amount of time it takes for that circle to fill is gonna depend heavily on how dark the scene is. So if I cover the camera with my finger here, then it's gonna have me hold still a little bit longer. However, if you have a really dark scene and you put the camera on a tripod, you can take a photo that lasts over four minutes long. So let me go ahead and turn the lights off and show you what that looks like. Now that I have the lights off and the phone is stabilized, if I tap the shutter button now, in night sight mode, you'll see that it's gonna take an exposure for over four minutes. And this is gonna pull an incredible amount of detail into the dark parts of the photo. Take a look at this picture, for example. This was taken on a tripod and it was just over a four minute exposure and the amount of detail is incredible for a nighttime photo. Now contrast that with the exact same scene also taken on a tripod with an iPhone 11 Pro Max set to its longest exposure. And you can see that the difference is considerable. The differences get even more staggering when I throw in this Note 10 Plus photo also taken on a tripod with its best night mode settings. And just for good measure, here's a photo of the stars taken on the Pixel 4 with a tripod. Then here's the same photo on the iPhone 11 Pro Max again with a tripod. And here it is with the Note 10 Plus, again, with a tripod. So when it comes to nighttime photography, if you've got a tripod hanging around, there's just no beating the Pixel 4. If you find that you're just spending way too much time in certain applications, like maybe you spend hours a day on Facebook and you want to kick that habit, well, the Google Pixel can help with that. Just go to Settings, scroll down to Digital Wellbeing, tap Dashboard, scroll down to the app that's consuming all your time, tap the hourglass, and then set a daily timer for that application. So if you're spending multiple hours in the application and you're like, no, I really only wanna spend a maximum of 45 minutes in this application any given day, then you can set this timer, tap okay, and now after 45 minutes of use, it's gonna kick you out of that application and not let you open it again. Now, obviously you can override this if you want to and open the app anyway, but it just kind of serves as an extra reminder, kind of a barrier to say, hey, you've been in this app for a while today, maybe you should give it a break. And in case you missed it when I set the timer, the timer does reset at midnight each night. So you don't need to worry about coming back into this application each day and setting the timer again. Now, the only thing you can't do that would have been a nice feature is to have it set by days as well. So if during the weekdays, you only wanna spend 45 minutes max in Facebook, but on the weekends, you don't mind if you spend an hour or two in Facebook, there's really no way to set that kind of parameter. Another cool thing about these app timers is that specifically for Chrome, you can actually show specific sites that you visit and limit the time you spend on certain websites. So let's say you go on Reddit all the time, then this is a great way to limit just your time in Reddit, not with the internet browser in general. If I back out of this, there's another great feature here to help you disconnect from your phone, and it's called Wind Down. If I tap this and turn it on, then I'm gonna get these start and end time options for different days of the week as well. So the way it's currently set, at 11 p.m. every day during the week, it's going to set my phone to grayscale and turn on do not disturb. Then at 7 a.m. or my next alarm, whichever comes first, it's going to turn off grayscale and do not disturb mode. On top of that, you can also add the nightlight to the schedule as well. 
and the nightlight just gets rid of a lot of the blue light in the screen. As you can see, it turns pretty reddish, and this is gonna be a lot easier on your eyes at night when you're trying to get ready for bed, because studies have shown that looking at too much blue light will actually keep you awake even though you're trying to fall asleep. So if you have nightlight turned on automatically at 11, as well as grayscale and do not disturb, it's gonna be a little bit easier for you physically to fall asleep when you get into bed. And obviously the start and stop time is adjustable, as well as the days of the week. Scrolling down a bit further in the digital well-being settings, there's this flip to shh option here. And what this is gonna do is automatically put your phone into do not disturb every time you place your phone face down on a table. And when you do that, it's gonna give you a couple vibrations to let you know. So if I do this here, I don't know if you could hear that, but it vibrated quickly three times to let me know that it's in do not disturb mode. Then when I flip the phone back over, it comes right back out of do not disturb mode. So this is particularly useful if you have a lot of business meetings. You can just take your phone out, lay it face down on the table, and that's gonna make sure that you don't get any interruptions during that meeting. And I have tested this in my pocket, and it doesn't turn on do not disturb mode while it's in my pocket. It only works when it's on a flat surface and face down. If you frequently log into accounts that require verification codes that are sent to you through texts, then this next feature is gonna be really handy for you. Go ahead and go into your settings, scroll all the way down to Google, Scroll all the way to the bottom and tap verification code autofill. Now, if you turn this on, it allows Google to see the text messages that come in for verification codes and automatically enter those codes into the verification box in the app. And if you tap this autofill services settings, then tap add service, you can add popular services like LastPass as well. If you're in school or a journalist, then you're really gonna love Google's built-in recorder application. If you swipe up to see all your apps, then scroll down to recorder and tap that to open it. Now, if I start a recording, you'll see that it's getting all of the audio, but if I tap transcript, you'll see that it's also getting all of the text as well. And it's transcribing it really quickly. I mean, it's borderline real time. This is something that is thoroughly impressive to me. And as you can see, every time I add a long pause in, it's going to split the time code for me so I could see exactly when that was said. Once you finish the recording, it saves on the home page, and these blue lines show times when I was talking, and the gray lines are times of silence. And if I tap it, I can go ahead and tap play and hear the audio. You'll see that it's getting all the audio. And I can go ahead and tap transcript and see all of the transcript as well. And I can actually search through the transcript as well. So if I tap that and search for audio, tap search, it's gonna show me everywhere the word audio showed up in the transcript. And once you've searched for something, if you go back to audio, it's actually going to highlight that bit of audio in yellow. And if I tap play, it's gonna play from that point. Audio. If, I tap transcript. if you don't remember which recording had the information you were looking for, you can actually go back and search through all of your recordings, and it will show you all the places in all of your recordings that that word appeared. And if you just wanna select where you want the audio to start from, you can come to this transcript page, tap where you want to start from, then tap play, and it's gonna start playing back the audio from that point. And as you can see, every time I add a long pause in, and if your friend missed class and they wanna get the notes, all you have to do is tap the three dots in the corner, tap share, and send it as either an audio file, text file, or both to your friend. And you can obviously long press and select text, and then go ahead and copy it and paste it into any other application you want. The last thing, and probably the best thing, is that all of this happens locally on your device. None of your recordings go to the cloud to be processed. Everything is processed and transcribed right on the device, so all of your recordings stay private. The Pixel 4 and 4XL sport a 90 hertz display, which means everything's just gonna move a lot more fluidly when you're scrolling through different applications. However, by default, that 90 hertz display isn't always on. It occasionally goes back to a 60 hertz display depending on what you're looking at. If you want it to always be 90 hertz, you can do it, but it's pretty well hidden. First, go to settings, scroll all the way down to about phone, tap that. Scroll all the way down to build number and tap that seven times. Enter your pattern to confirm that you want to enable developer options. Then go back, tap system, tap advanced, Tap developer options, scroll down to the debugging section, scroll to the bottom of that section, and you'll see this force 90 hertz refresh rate. Tap the toggle to turn it on, then the display will always refresh at 90 hertz, so no matter what you're doing, you're gonna get that buttery smooth motion. Google Play Instant is something that Google announced quite a while ago, and it's something that allows websites to actually open in applications without you having to download the application. 
So it basically gives you a much better mobile experience without actually having to download the app for that website. But this feature isn't turned on by default. So to turn it on, go to settings, scroll all the way down to Google, tap account services, tap Google Play Instant, and turn that on. Now anytime an instant app is available for a website, it's automatically going to open it in that instant app. And if over time you prefer not to use instant apps for some websites, then you can actually exclude those in the list here. If you have motion photos turned on by swiping down when you're in the camera app and turning them on here, then you get a nice bonus feature other than the fact that you get a little video that plays with the photo. So if I open up this recent motion photo, you can see that I can tap this motion photo icon here and it's gonna play back all the photos it captured. I can also pause that and just long press and it's gonna do the same thing. But the important thing here is if I tap these three dots, then tap select shots, Google's going to automatically determine what the best photo is and recommend that I save that photo instead. Now from here, I can tap other photos and see what those ones look like and kind of decide exactly which one I want to save. And once I have one I like, I just tap save copy. So now if I go to my photos app and swipe over one photo, you can see the copy I saved. Now an important thing to point out is that this is a lower resolution than the original photo. So if I go back to the original and swipe up, you can see that it was an eight megapixel photo because it was with a front facing camera. If I go to the one that I saved a copy of and swipe up there, you'll see that it was a three megapixel photo. So while I may get a better looking photo, I am gonna sacrifice some quality in the photo by doing this. While squeezing the sides on your pixel can be used to activate Google Assistant, it can also be used to silence phone calls. If you guys know of another unknown or hidden feature, definitely let us all know in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget to like the video if you liked it, share it if you loved it, and subscribe for more in-depth tech coverage just like this. And while you're at it, smack that notification bell so you can be the first to know when the videos drop. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.